Cincinnati, Ohio is a music city. Over the years, the city has raised and exported plenty of talent into the music world, and today is no different. But without their supporters, Cincinnati musicians would be nowhere. And without one specific fan, the local music world would be one very different place. Hi, my name is Pat Rise. I'm 65 years old. I go to a lot of local shows around Cincinnati and Covington, Kentucky, some in Newport. As most people in the scene know, Pat's like a super fan. And when I started a venue back in 2004 at Radio Down, um, I noticed Pat would come in a lot and just hang out. And I got to know her through that and just fell in love with her as a person because she's such a sweet lady. I think uh, Pat's status in the scene is it's because it's so odd. It, the scene is filled with friends that are, you know, teenagers, moving on into their 20s, early 30s. And then you have a lady like Pat, who's a little bit older. She really has no connection to the scene, yet everyone embraces her like a, a family because she's there every night. I remember getting an email from someone named Pat Rice, and actually I mistakenly took it for someone that, I, that had graduated the year before me in high school. Hey, I want to come see your, your band. Um, do you know when the bus stops at Northern? People probably think I'm crazy because I'm a a 65-year-old woman hanging out with these 18 and 20-year-old kids. <laughs> I don't care. I still like my boys and girls. I got nothing, I'm sorry, but, you know, good good luck, Pat. I hope to see you there. Um, Mr. Pat Rice. Mr. Pat Rice, dude. And uh, as, as it turns out, Pat Rice was not a 22-year-old dude. He, uh, he was a 59-year-old woman. For close to 10 years, Patty has been a quiet yet constant fixture in Cincinnati clubs. And you're probably thinking the same thing that everybody thinks when they first meet her. I want to ask her the same question that everybody does ask her. Do you remember your first show? Of course she does. Um, I usually went home and just stayed home and watched television. And I guess I picked up a paper called City Beat. And I saw this band called Promenade playing at a place called Mad Frog. It was March. 11th, 2000, and I went to the show. They were interesting to listen to. And then the next Thursday, they were playing at a place called the Barrel House over on 12th Street in downtown Cincinnati. And it just grew from there. Um, usually, I don't stay home anymore. I go out to the shows mostly every night if there's something, somebody playing that I want to see. Doing a little bit of rough math, Pat had to have attended over 200 shows a year for the last 10 years. That's around 2,000 local music events in the same city. And with that kind of experience, you'd better believe that she's earned somewhat of a reputation. If you stage a big event in the city and she's not there, then your event sucks. She's the common person on everybody's guest list. Everybody thinks like if I don't go to a certain show, it's not any good. If I go to a show, it's a good show. I think she's the, the epitome of what everybody who was a musician wants and a fan. It's just the thing that I do is go to the shows and see the people and, and talk to the bands and they become my friends. And... It's just about the music. She doesn't drink, she doesn't smoke, and even people she knows, she doesn't talk a lot. She's strictly after the music. You know, you can probably almost see her as a novelty. Like, she doesn't see herself like that at all. You know, she's there for music. She's probably been to like four shows in one night at one point. Like, we had a show at the Mad Frog down in Clifton, and she was like, Yeah, I just got back from another show, and I'm going to one after this. And it's like, Damn, man, nobody does that. I really never thought about it. Just get up in the morning and do my thing, and whatever. It would be quite enough if a woman of her age was simply attending all of these events. But Pat has taken her dedication to another level. 
she always used to take pictures, and it was all physical pictures. I'd give them the duplicates, and they appreciated it a whole lot, especially when 610. I just pictures from like the last show that we played. Like she would take pictures and then get them developed, and then just bring them in an envelope every time. I think Pat really likes uh, seeing these bands. So she's known a lot of these people since they were, you know, teenagers in their first band, and she keeps track of them as they progress and join different bands and. She even knows people's birthdays in different bands. <laughs> I made Josh from Mid 610 a, a birthday cake, and he was really surprised. He was tickled. You can always count on something nice from Pat, which is something that it's hard to uh, to find that in someone. That every time you see him, you know you're going to have a good experience talking to him or just spending time with him. Pat lives alone downtown, and especially since her recent retirement from the home health care business. She spends a lot of afternoons in the downtown public library on Vine Street. She uses a computer and the internet better than many people who are half her age, and the way she learned seems very fitting for such a self-reliant woman. I used to go to Tri-County a lot to just go look around and shop, and there was a area by the food court that had a computer set up that had people to help people learn how to use it, and that's how I learned how to use it. Remember the Dewey Decimal System where you go to the computer and you write down the number and then you'd follow it over and find the book or whatever? Well, they give you these little pieces of paper with the golf pencils, and Pat has a collection of those. She goes to the library, hops on the internet, and writes down all the names and just has a big stack of them in her purse. And you know, I, I'm like, Pat, who'd you see last Thursday? Well, let's see. Uh, I was at the uh, the Blue Note that night, and I saw you know Denial and Kristen Key play. And she'll never forget any show. Like she could like think of a show like five years ago. Oh, remember that show? Whatever, you know. It's like, no, but you do. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> the time and energy that Patty takes to stay informed on local music is truly remarkable. And although she's not one for the limelight public recognition does come around for her every once in a while. The good people at City Beat Magazine extended an invitation to Pat to present the 2007 Cincinnati Entertainment Award for punk music. 2007 was the last year we did uh, the Taft Theater, actually. Her name came up and we were like, oh, that's perfect. We have to get Pat to do it. And Dan asked me if I wanted to present and he told him yes, so I did. It was a good choice because I think she might have got the biggest ovation of the night, so. CEA for Punk, the nominees are. Yeah! yeah! Everybody started screaming my name. <laughs> that was fun. But Pat is probably better celebrated where she is most comfortable, in Cincinnati's music venues. Uh, yeah, we had her 60th birthday party at Radio Down, and, uh, you know, we got a bunch of her favorite bands to play, and, uh, we had cake and ice cream and fried chicken. She showed up in, like, this big, like, white dress that she clearly hadn't worn in about 15 years. You know, she seemed, like, genuinely really impressed that somebody went out of their way to really do something like that for, uh, and for the bands, it was, like, such an honor to, to be able to say, man, we played Pat Rice's birthday party at Radio Down. We charge money at the door for her birthday parties and we give her all the door money so that she can pay for her bus pass for the year so that she can get from, because that's how she travels around from show to show is by public transportation. Yeah, I told Frank to get the band so he ended up getting nine bands for me. So it was a long night. I think that instance, just seeing how many people she affects and how many people in turn go out and support her shows how much she means to the uh, music scene. Many people have touched and shaped Pat's life over the last 10 years. But maybe more important than that is how many lives Pat has touched in her career as a local music supporter. Those that know Pat can and will readily attest to how open her heart is. I don't know why she took a special interest in us, but it was like, I think it, it helped us become like the band that we were in the Cincinnati scene. I said, boys but like I can be your mommy and they go like we got mommies we ain't got no Grammys so I've turned into their so they've named me punk rock grandma and she like made it a point to like come up to me every show and like talk to me for 15 minutes and you know just like actually like bond like a friend I yeah mean, I don't think of her as like an old lady like I think of her as just like a genuine person she always she's always asking me about my daughter and my girlfriend and everything. And she's always interested in what, I, what I'm doing in my life. Yeah, a lot of people know that I've had uh, 
uh, a little problem with alcohol and <clears throat> drugs and stuff in my past. Then it's funny because you know every once in a while I will drink, and uh, if Pat Rice is at that show, I can feel the presence of her looking at me like like a mom, a shame. You know, for us, we're thankful, and you know, I'm sure for the 10, 15, 20 years down the road, something will come along for these other guys, but you know, for us, Pat. Yeah, yeah, it's Pat, you know. I don't see Pat Rice going anywhere. As long as she's able, she will be going to show. Oh yeah, absolutely. She'll outlast most people. We may never have like another Void, or Void 2, or we may never have another Radio Down, but and you'll never have another Pat Rice, you know? Like that, that's big time. Pat Rice just kind of reminds you why why you do all this stuff, you know? You get wrapped up in like day-to-day -day crap and you know, paying the bills and, and worrying about working too much, and especially when you work in the music industry because you're always surrounded by it, so you kind of forget why you love it, but then you see somebody like Pat that just enjoys it and, I don't know, it just kind of snaps you back to, to why you started doing all this stuff, so. You know, the Cincinnati music scene would be so much better off if there were a hundred more genuine characters like Pat Rice. I feel like lots of people in the scene care about Pat and want to make sure that she's taken care of. So I, I think going forward, that's one thing that we can all, you know, feel good about as a scene is that she's a part of our scene and that we embrace her as a part of our scene. And you know, as the years go by, hopefully she'll still be rocking out the shows, you know, and hopefully we can help her in whatever way. Pat Rice is one of the most unique and valuable assets that Cincinnati music has. Tirelessly, she goes above and beyond what anybody else does for local music and does it with a beautiful, infectious smile on her face. If you see this woman at a show in the future, talk to her and get to know her. If you do, I promise you, your life will be changed for the better. Yes.